The defendant will rise and face the jury and hearken to its verdicts. State of Wisconsin versus Kyle Rittenhouse. As to the first count of the information, Joseph Rosenbaum, we, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. As to the second count of the information, Richard McGinnis, we, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. As to the third count of the information, unknown male, we, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. As to the fourth count of the information, Anthony Huber, we, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. As to the fifth count of the information, Gage Grosskreutz, we, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Kyle Rittenhouse being found not guilty on all charges. Now, before I get into this video, I just want to give a shout out to Kyle Rittenhouse, his mom, his family, all his loved ones, and shout out to the jury as well. I know it was hard for you because you guys were getting stalked by MS-13 DNC and a Chinese operative. I mean, the mercenary, I mean, the contract worker from NBC who followed you guys trying to photograph you, trying to figure out who you are and dox you and post your address and stuff like that. I know it's hard for all you guys. So I just want to give a shout out to y'all for being strong and holding the line, being positive and ultimately doing the right thing. All right. This was a political case from the beginning. It should never have gone to trial. And if there was any other verdict aside from that guilty, it would have been a complete miscarriage of justice. Now, let's get into it. Why was Cal Rittenhouse found not guilty on all charges? And those charges, I'm not really sure what the exact charges were, but we know what the general synopsis is. You have, I think, two people shot and killed and one person who was shot and not killed. It might have been the fourth guy who got shot. I'm not quite sure. But I know two died and one guy was severely injured. Now, the two that died were named, um, what's his name? Anthony Huber and Joseph Rosenbaum. Now, Mr. Rosenbaum had been convicted of some very heinous crimes against children that I won't get into right now. So I'll go ahead and move on. But they're gone. And the other person who got shot, who went to the courtroom by the name of Gage Groiskutz, had his arm pretty much blown off. We're talking about taco meat. Eating chicken wing, it looked really nasty. If you want to see the picture of said injury, I'll link to that in the description box. But Gage Groiskutz was the star uh, prosecution witness. And all he did was get on the stand and say that Cal Rittenhouse did not shoot him until he pulled his pistol out and pointed it at Cal Rittenhouse while he was on the ground trying to defend himself. So there was never any evidence that said Cal Rittenhouse did anything else other than defend himself. Now, some are going to say, well, he shouldn't have been out there. He crossed eight lines at 17 years old. Let's address all that. Let's get into all that. First of all, if Cal Rittenhouse shouldn't have been there, then nobody should have been there. Okay. There was a curfew, not for 17 year olds, but for everyone, because there was already unrest in that particular area because of BLM and Antifa riots over the whole Jacob Blake shooting in Kenosha. Okay. So nobody should have been out there. So when someone says that the argument gets canceled out immediately because that applies to everyone, not just Cal Rittenhouse. And some are going to say, well, he shouldn't have been armed. Why go there with a gun? Well, why was Gage Groiskutz armed? Why was anybody armed? Why was the person trying to hit Rittenhouse in the head with a skateboard? Huh? I mean, why was anybody doing that? Again, it cancels itself out. And to go to the whole thing about the gun, that was dismissed before the actual jury deliberations. Why? Because the gun was legal. You are able, and according to uh, Wisconsin law, you're able to carry a long gun at 17 as long as it's not concealed. You can't conceal a long gun, obviously. I mean, it'd be kind of hard unless you got on a trench coat or something like that, like Columbine school shooting, but different story. Anyway, if you have a long gun open, you can carry that in Wisconsin at age 17. The way the law is written permits it. 
Now, if you would have had a short barrel rifle, that would have been illegal. If you would have had a handgun concealing it, that would have been illegal, which is something interesting because I think Gage Groyskutz had a concealed handgun. I don't think he was just walking around with it in his hand, waving it like it was a flag or something. I'm pretty sure he had that holster in his appendix or waistline or something like that. So why is he not being brought up on charges? I'm not really sure, but I'll go ahead and digress. The whole point is that the gun that Cal Rittenhouse had was legal. Then the whole thing about state lines, that's just the media making up. And I'm, I'm going to get to the media, please. I, I'm going to get to the media. The whole thing about state lines was made up by the media because um, he technically lived in Antioch, Illinois, but that's right on the border of Wisconsin. I'm talking about directly on the border and right across the border is Kenosha. As a matter of fact, um, Cal Rittenhouse, as far as where he lived to where the actual incident happened, had less travel time than Gage Groyskutz, who was prosecution star witness. Because Gage came from Milwaukee, which is further away from Kenosha than Antioch, Illinois is. Okay? The whole state lines thing is the dumbest thing in the world that I've ever heard from the media, especially when they say that uh, borders don't matter, lines don't matter, built on the border wall is racist, nobody's illegal, all this, that, and the third. But all that goes out the window when it comes to a state line. Make that make sense for me. If there's no such thing as a country line, then why does the state line matter more than the country line? I, but again, I move on. Now, this case should never have actually gone to trial because it was open and shut self-defense, okay? Open and shut. People were attacking them. It was caught on videotape. You see Cal Rittenhouse running away. You see people like Gage Groyskutz and others running after him. He's getting knocked on the ground. He's getting attacked, surrounded. He has to defend himself, okay? That's that's pure self-defense. That's textbook self-defense, right? That's what it was. But the media and left-wing politicians really stirred this whole thing up. They stirred it up. And that, that brings me a, a good question I had. Um, who's going to get sued first? Who's going to get sued first? Is it going to be the big guy, Joe Biden? Because remember, right when the whole Cal Rittenhouse thing happened, last year during the campaign to become the president, Joe Biden seized on that. There was a video that he posted on Twitter, and I'll place a link to that in the description box so you can see it for yourself, where a, a caption said something like, uh, during the debate last night, Trump did not want to denounce white supremacists when he was asked by Chris Wallace of Fox News. Remember that? Now, in the video, there were scenes from different um, events across the country. I think one might have been Charlottesville. Then you had... Kenosha and they showed Cal Rittenhouse with his rifle. They show him. So they were calling Cal Rittenhouse a white supremacist. If you were to say something like Cal Rittenhouse defended himself and he didn't do anything wrong on, let's say, for example, Facebook, you might get banned for that. I got a um, seven day ban that was quickly rescinded, but I did get a ban just the other day, not even just last year when it was first happening. I'm talking about like a week ago. All I said was free Cal. That's it. I didn't link to a story. I didn't post a meme. Just those eight letters. F-R-E-E-K-Y-L-E. -E -E, free out. That's it. I got a seven-day ban. That if I didn't appeal, I would have still been on. You see what I'm saying? So you have Facebook trying to get in the way, trying to make it seem like Cal Rittenhouse was a white supremacist and a terrorist. Same thing for a lot of other social media platforms. Twitter may have been involved. Politicians may have been involved. And you know the, the, the television networks MS-13, DNC, ABC, CNN, CBS, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. They were attacking him. He's a menace. He's a white supremacist. He is um, a vigilante. All this, that, and he hates black people. He's a racist because he went to a Black Lives Matter rally. Although at this so-called rally, all I saw was I didn't see any rally. And I didn't see any marches and chants and whatnot. It's at night. And I see a bunch of looting and fire burning and gunshots and stuff like that going on. And I see a 99.99% .99 white crowd. The crowd was whiter than Elizabeth Warren. From what I was able to see, all those who were hurt, who tried to attack Cal Rittenhouse were white. So how do we glean from that that he is a racist or a white supremacist? The whole narrative 
was fake from the beginning. Why? Why? Why was it even a trial? Why was this even a thing that had to go to court and get resolved? It's because there were so many things involved with this. First, you have straight white male. Already, you're the enemy of the state. Just by being a white person, you're the enemy. And you're straight and you're a male. That's three strikes, you're out. Three strikes, you're out. Straight white male. That's the first thing. Second thing, oh, AR-15. That's the worst gun in the world. That's a war machine. That's worse than a nuclear warhead. You might as well have a minefield in front of your apartment. You might as well be torturing little kittens in, in the back room and filming that on Facebook for the world to see. Okay, AR-15. I, I mean, I see all kinds of things about that weapon. People just don't know. Talking about, you know, it's, it's like a telephone game, right? The media keep talking about AR-15, white male, cross state lines, hates black people, false narratives that get spun so ridiculous, it becomes a whole big monster when you hear the finality of it, when you hear the the ultimate version, the final form of the story. Um, they're talking about he came from California, crossed multiple state lines with a bunch of rednecks and skinheads in the truck, had a bunch of guns that he bought from Mexico, ghost guns, fully automatic machine guns, more down black people. I mean, it's ridiculous stuff. When in reality, the gun, from what I know, was always in Kenosha, okay? It might have been his friend that let him have or hold a gun for a while, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong about that, let me know. But the gun was always in uh, Wisconsin. It was never across the line, okay? He was legally operating the weapon because of the law in Wisconsin. People attacked him, and he defended himself, and the people were white. So... This just was political from the beginning. Um, again, shout out to the jurors for doing what you had to do. You, you guys have been intimidated by people trying to follow you home and figure out who you are and dox you and stuff like that. I'm glad you guys did not vote the pressure. And I'm glad you guys took time to figure out what was going on. There was a question with the video toward the end there, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure if they knew if there were two versions of it. I think one version the prosecution had but didn't release, but they gave to the defense and it was blurry. But the version they had was like in 4K HD, you were able to see what's going on with 100% certainty. It wasn't no guesswork going on. But the main thing as I close that they had to prove was if Cal Rittenhouse was provoking people, was he trying to antagonize them to attack them? Like, what's going on? Did he do. The Joseph Rosenbaum thing, shoot me in word. Was it like that? Or was he just out there, as he said, trying to be a medic, trying to help, trying to serve the community, volunteering, putting fires out, doing things of that nature? The videotape proved that's what he was doing. The videotape did not prove that he was in any kind of way provoking people to attack him. People that attacked him were bad people. Okay, you got a child predator, you got burglars and robbers and killers people that go in and out of the system they're bad people and shout out to cal for not being a bad person for being a good person and doing what he had to do in that situation it's unfortunate he had to do it i don't think he really takes pleasure in doing it but you have that right to defend yourself in the good old us of a and i think i'll leave that right there for now and what say you how do you feel about this verdict that Cal Rittenhouse has been found not guilty on all charges. Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. Uh, you guys pretty much know where I'm at. I say it's a great thing. And I got to add one last thing to those who talk about the whole race issue. Oh, if he was black, then he would have got shot right away. He wouldn't have been able to. Listen, I've seen plenty of guys that are black claim self-defense, stand your ground, stuff like that, and be able to get off. Like, remember the case in Florida of Zimmerman and the whole senior ground thing? He was able to get off on that. And people said, well, if he was black, that wouldn't have happened. Most of the cases, well, I won't say most. I'm going to say black folks were disproportionately ruled in favor of when they claim stand your ground. Because let's not forget, I mean, it's not just, you know, black men that commit a lot of the violent crime and whatnot. It's black men who are also the victims of other black men committing violent crime. So let's say, for example, you're a regular, hardworking black man, right? Tyler Perry movie type guy. You understand? Crazy wig and all. Taking care of all your kids, going to work at the plant, your, your, your fingers and your hands looking crazy, taco meat tore up because you're a hardworking man, taking care of your families and your responsibility, right? 
Then all of a sudden, here comes a home invader trying to run in your crib and kidnap your kids and your wife and whatnot, and you shoot and kill them. Now they try to say, oh, well, you did something wrong and you should have waited. No, no, no. Self-defense, castle doctrine, stand your ground. I want to go to court. If I do go to court, I'm going to beat it. I'm going to beat it because I have the right to defend myself. That gets used so often among the black community against other black folks, against white folks. I ever saw a black male shoot at two white police officers and get off because of the situation. Okay. People just got to understand what the law is and they can't look at things from the lens of the media whose only job is to present misinformation to get you to think one way because of political purposes and or for clicks and views and ratings. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.